Hi, everyone. I want to keep this short. You all know about the great products here at Old Time Radio DVD. Well, now's the time to purchase. Why now? Just can't afford to keep on doing this forever for free. So go to oldtimeradiodvd.com. Take advantage of our great pricing. Miss West was a good kid. She practically ran the Reinhardt Motor Company single-handed. So how she put up with Reinhardt, I could never find out. He was frog-eyed with a big cigar stuck in his mouth. But Miss West was a good kid. Now and then when I had a blow-off steam, she and I'd have lunch at the dairy place across the street. And I'd tell her about him. About the women. Oh, they're the worst. The women? Yeah, they're the worst. Oh, what happened this morning? Now, remember that call to demonstrate a car from Mr. Uh, John Summit here? Yeah. So I pull up at the address, and there they were. whole squadron of them sitting up on the porch waiting for me. Women? Mm, all sizes and shapes. They poured down the steps and piled into the car. <laughs> so they wanted to go shopping downtown. So you drove them shopping? Dodged around in traffic, hunting a place to park, only there wasn't any. This, uh, Mrs. John, whatever her name was, kept saying, Now, John insisted that I try this car, but I'm going to tell him it's foolish to buy a car that's so difficult to find parking space for as this one appears to be. <laughs> for you. <laughs> well, what'd you do, Buck? Well, I let him out of some store and drove off and left him there. No, wait till Mr. Reinhardt hears about this. Oh, is he after? Well, Oh, I don't know. I... <laughs> I, I can't sell automobiles or anything else. But... Yeah? You've had three of... Where'd you hear that? I don't know. Somebody. Must have been somebody who knows me. You were a pilot in the war, weren't you? That's right. Well, why'd you quit flying? Hmm? No reason. Why don't you go back to it? No reason. Well, you say yourself you're not much good at selling automobiles. Here's your coffee. Oh, thank you. Why don't you look for a job you'd be interested in? I don't know. Guess I never learned to do anything interesting, except maybe to fly. Mm. You do like flying. Flying? Oh, it suits me right down to the ground. Oh, uh, should I? Thanks. I have four years of flying, two in the war and two afterward. I stayed on after the armistice as a test pilot. That's when I took up wing walking. Which one, sir? Oh, yeah, thanks. Did you say wing walking? A fellow named Waldrip and I used to hide out in the clouds at about 3,000 feet. I'd climb out on the wing and muscle around. Ooh, makes me dizzy to think about it. Oh, army life gets pretty dull in peacetime. Nothing to do but play around. Lie your head off all day about how you won the war. <laughs> Playing poker all night. Like more coffee? No, thanks. You coming back to the office? Hey, you know, I think maybe I'll take the afternoon off. I won't tell Mr. Reinhardt. Well, you're a good kid, Miss West. Good kid. I just drifted around town that afternoon, going no place special. And I ran into one of my war buddies. His name was Jack. Hey, Buck, what are you doing these days? Oh, selling cars. Or uh, trying to sell them. I don't know of a good wing walker looking for a job, do you? Huh? What kind of job? Barnstorm and Circus. Bird named Harris owns it. Another bird named Rogers runs it. Here in town? Yeah, you know that airfield out beyond that golf links? Yeah, sure. Yeah, they do most of their stunning for state fairs. Carnivals, you know. But Rogers does most of the flying. The uh, good pilot? <laughs> One of the best. You know what, Jack? I might take the job myself. You kidding? No, I mean it. Hey, look, I'll give you a note to this bird, Rogers. Yeah, sure, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I'll write him in the back of an envelope. The uh, good guy, this Rogers? <laughs> One of the best. Yeah, except for his wife. They say she's not happy with it. Oh, so's your old man. Right, that's what they say. <laughs> Mr. Reinhardt in? Oh, he's in conference. I didn't expect to see you again today. Well, I came back to see Reinhardt. Oh, you can't go in there. 
<laughs> You're a good kid, Miss West, but I gotta see Reinhardt. I told you he's busy. And you'll find our new 1921 model is beyond <clears throat> anything ever uh, previously uh, Mr. Reinhardt. What is it, Monahan? Can't you see I'm busy? How much notice do you want to write me off? Write you off? What are you talking about? Look here, Monahan. I'm, I'm quitting. Will one day be noticed enough? You've been with us three weeks, Monaghan. Not long enough to learn what that word private means on my door. Three weeks is pretty good, Mr. Reinhardt. Huh? Within two days of a record. <laughs> will uh, one day be enough notice? One minute will be enough. Yes, Mr. Reinhardt. Miss West, we're letting Mr. Monaghan go. Send him to the cashier. Don't bother. Keep it by yourself a hoop. <laughs> Expected Mrs. Rogers to be one of those long, dark, snake like women, surrounded by ostrich plumes and dime store incense, you know, smoking cigarettes on a divan, but I was wrong. She wore an apron, one of those pale, washy dresses, and after dinner I helped her with the dishes. Howard phoned me this afternoon. Told me you'd be coming out for dinner. Did he? Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I expect you're finding it's a pretty dull way to spend an evening, having to dry dishes. I imagine you'd rather go out to dance. Why do you think that? Oh, I don't know. No, don't I look like I could do anything else but go out dancing? Oh, don't you? have to take us as we are, first as well as later. Are you sorry? No. No, that's just how I'd want it. We don't expect you to enjoy this any more than we enjoy it, because we're so broke. We're just an aviator. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right, too. How would you Yeah. Look, uh, I better be going. Oh, I, I'm afraid I can't move my head without waking up. No, no, don't do that. Good night, Mr. Monahan. Yeah. Thanks for dinner. We'll... Uh, we'll see you again. Sure. Soon? Yeah. Soon. She looks about 16, especially in an apron. She even bought an apron for me to wear. The three of us had cooked dinner. When Howard told me you were a flyer that first afternoon, I said, not another wing walker. Didn't I, Howard? That's right. When you're choosing a family friend, I said, why don't you choose a man we can invite to dinner a week ahead and not only count on his being here, but on his taking us out and spending his money on us? (laughs) But Howard had to choose one who was as broke as we are. (laughs) I... Hey, I got an idea. I, I I want you both to have dinner with me this week, huh? Uh, Downtown. We could take in a show. Oh, I didn't mean that like it sounded. Oh, of course you didn't. Oh, well, that wasn't a hint to take us out. Oh, I I know it wasn't. Uh, well, well, Howard, we'll, we'll have to find Buck a girl. That's an idea. He's going to get tired of just us. No, that'll never be. Do you want us to find you a girl, Buck? Do you? No. No, thanks. My wife's just like all the other wives, trying to find a wife for every bachelor. I guess that's a sign of a happy marriage. Think so? Sure. She wants everybody else to be as happy as she is. As happy as I am? That's right, but I wish every wife was as happy as I am. So after a while, when there was a high step or any of those little things which men do for women that 
means touching them. She turned to me. Like it was me with her husband. And not him. Got so I was going out to their place for dinner two or three times every week. Yeah? Oh, Howard? Oh, you. Uh, maybe I got the date wrong, huh? What? I mean, weren't you expecting me for dinner? Sure, come on in. Hey, something wrong? Oh, uh, wife and I are having a little quarrel. You can sit and listen. Oh, but Howard. We have lots of these quarrels. Time you heard one. I just can't stand it. I've tried and I've tried, but I just can't stand it. Hello, Bob. Hello, Melvin. I tell you, Howard, I can't stand it. I just can't take it anymore. You know what my insurance rates are. If something happened, where would you be? Where am I anyway? Tell me that. Ah, now I look. I mean it. What sentiment woman hasn't gotten more than I've got? Well, maybe you shouldn't have married a flyer. Why did you quit flying? Quit? Why not? Do something that you can get a decent insurance rate, like other men. Sit down, Buck. Uh, no, thanks. I, I guess I better be getting along. I'll come to the door with you. Can I know this? Have dinner with us tomorrow night, Buck. Maybe. I'm sorry about this, Buck. Ah, forget it. We have lots of these squabbles. They don't mean anything. Uh, look, Howard. I got a little steak hidden away. Just because I've eaten so much of your grub, I haven't had time to spend it. So, well, you know, if it's anything urgent. No, no. Of course, I wouldn't try to muscle in. Right I now. wouldn't if I were you. See you at the field tomorrow. Yeah, sure. It's clear. Our star is Paul Fries. At the end of our program, I want to tell you more about Paul Fries. It's an interesting story, and I don't want to detract from his performance in the NBC short story, Honor, by William Foster. But listen at the end of the program. I'll give you some interesting data on him. For the next few weeks, I was with Howard every day, but he never mentioned her name again. Then one afternoon, he had a phone call. It came just as he was going out to the field to Hopkins Pass. Yeah? Well, I'll ask him. Yeah, I'll see you later. That was Mildred on the phone. Mildred? When did you get back? Just now. She asked for you. Did she? I want you to come out for dinner tonight. Tonight? I'll expect you around 7. See you later. I got work to do. I'm back, Buck. I'm back. Don't wait until tonight. Come out this afternoon. Please, Buck. Come out now. Hey, uh, Harris? Yeah? I'm, uh, taking the afternoon off. Oh, sure, Bob, sure. Say, uh, when Howard comes back, uh, tell him I couldn't make it for dinner. It was long. Reading for the fire. Oh, Buck. It's like gasoline from a broken line blazing up around you. A couple of days later, Howard and I took a plane up for some practice. When I got out on the wing, I looked back at Howard's face behind the windscreen, wondering what he knew. He must have found out almost at once. He didn't have any discretion at all. He'd say and do things. This time, sitting close to me, looking at me in that way she did, even when Howard was looking at both of them. I unfastened my belt and crawled out on the wing, looked back at his face and wondered what he was thinking. How much did he know of the sex? I wondered. That so I'd stall around every afternoon till I saw how it was lined up for the rest of the day and then I'd give some excuse to Harris and beat it. One afternoon, I was all ready to go, waiting for Howard to take off. And he came across the field. Bob. Yeah, Howard? I'll go off. I want to see you. Yeah, sure, Howard. What is it? You haven't been out the house for dinner since Mildred got back. That's right. I haven't. Come out tonight. Tonight? Oh, I'm tonight, I thought. Sure. 
Fair enough. Good night. I know Dan that he knew. When I got to the house, they were waiting for me. She had on one of those squashy dresses. She came and put her arms around me and kissed me. Him watching. Buck. Buck, I'm going with you. Huh? That's right, Buck. We've talked it over and we've both agreed that we couldn't love one another anymore after this. What are you saying? Howard can find a woman he can love. A woman that's not... Not bad like I am. Is that right, Hart? That's right, Buck. He sat there looking at me in the chair. And I was thinking. Thinking that Howard and I were in the planet. And I was out on a wing. And I just found that Howard had thrown the stick away was flying around the rudder alone. And he knew that I knew the stick was gone. So it was all right now. Whatever happened. Buck. She was holding back and looking up in my face. Buck. Don't you love me anymore? What? If you love me, say so. But Mildred. I've told him all about it. I've told him everything. Mildred, Mildred. Say it, Buck. Say you love me. What do you want me to do, Howard? What do I want you to do? Yeah. Will you give her a divorce? Oh, Buck. You won't say it. You've been lying to me. You didn't mean what you said. Mildred. What have I done? What have I done? Show him, Mildred. I love you. Well, then tell Howard. Tell him what you say to me when we're alone. Oh, go ahead. He knows everything. Everything. Do you, Howard? Do you know everything? Doesn't matter. You love her? Yes, sir. You'd be good to her? Yeah. You want to marry her? Yes, Howard, yes. When I finally got away, the divorce was all settled. It was as easy as that. Next morning, I reached the field. Harris, the bird who owns the place, was waiting for me. Hey, you didn't forget, Buck. You got that special job today. Special job? Hey, you and Roger. You're doing a wing walking show for that carnival. Uh, I won't fly with Howard today. What are you talking about? Better ask him. But if he agrees to fly you, will you go up? All right. when I realized he must have remembered about the job all the time. He'd laid for me. Sucked me in. I waited until Harris left the field and then I turned on him. All right, Howard. So this is why you were so mealy-mouthed last night, huh? What are you talking about? Well, you got me now, haven't you? Right where you want me, out on a wing. Take this stick yourself. Huh? You do the flying, I'll do the wing walking. Yeah, sure, you feel good. You got me. Come on. Why don't you grin on the outside of your face? Come on. Let me have your shoes. I haven't got any with rubber soles. Give me your shoes and I'll do your trick. No. All right, get in the seat. We're going up. You're not afraid? What does that matter? Guess I'd do the same thing in your place. You really going through with it? Yes, I'm going through with it. was over an amusement park, a carnival. Must have been 25,000 ants down there. Watching it. I was a little crazy. I went back to the center section and passed the rope loop where looped around the forward jersey circuit. I got set against it and looked at Howard. I gave him a signal. I was a little crazy. The wires began to whine. I was looking straight down at the ground down at the end. Then the wires were whistling, popping, and he gunned it. 
The ground began to slide back under the nose. I waited until it was gone. I couldn't see anything but sky. Then I let go one end of the rope and held my arms out as she zoomed into the loop. I wasn't trying to kill myself. I wasn't even thinking about myself. I was thinking about him, about Howard. Trying to show him up like he'd shown me up. Give him something he must fail at. Like he'd given me something I'd fail at. Yeah, I was trying to break it. We were over the loop before he lost me. The ground had come back and then the pressure went up my toes and I lost my balance. I was falling. I better have somersault was just going into the first turn of a flat spin with my face to the sky when... <laughs> Something had banged me in the back. For a second, I've been completely out. Then I opened my eyes. I was lying on my back. From the top point, my head hanging over the back edge. I was too far down the slope of the camera to bend my knees over the leading edge. I could feel the wing creeping under me. I couldn't dare move. I knew if I tried to sit up against the good stream, I'd go off backwards. I could see the tail on the horizon that we were in a shallow dive. I could see Howard standing up in the cockpit, unfastening his belt. I could turn my head a little more and see that when I fell off, I'd missed the fuselage altogether. Or maybe, when I fell off, I'd missed the fuselage and hit with my shoulder. I lay there with the wing creeping under me. Creeping. Seeing my shoulders beginning to hang over space. Turning my back bones as they crept over the edge. Watching Howard crawl forward along the fuselage toward the front seat. I watched him for a long time. He was inching himself along against the pressure. His cars are like this. A long time. After a while, I saw his legs slide into the front cockpit. Then his body. His arms reached up to me. Fell asleep and touched me. His hands caught me. And I saw them pulling me back. Back. Back to safety. Goodbye. That's all. Goodbye. Mm-hmm.